Welcome to something crunchy. Tyler is homies with Blake. Blake is the older bro of Blair. Blair is married to Tyler and is a slutty slut slut. Welcome to something crunchy. What the hell is crunchy? Welcome to something crunchy. Welcome to another special edition episode of Something Crunchy. I am Kellen Blake. With me as always, Blair and Tyler Dressel. We have the crunchiest guest rejoining us today. You know him from shows like Seinfeld, Breaking Bad, and of course you just saw him reprise his role as the Mr. Heckles on the HBO Max Friends reunion. Please welcome back our friend Larry Hankin. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, that's so nice. Uh, the applause. Is, your audience is just wonderful. <laughs> they great. They love you. you uh, know, yeah, I, I love them. It's yes, a, it's it's a sellout crowd every episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are you doing, Mr. Larry? Um, I, I'm doing okay. I mean, it's it's getting warmer where I am. Where, where are you guys? Next door in Arizona. Arizona. Well, I guess it's probably sunny there. Is it sunny it there? It is painfully sunny here. It is amazingly oh, yeah. sunny. We're inside oh, well, and getting a sunburn. That's great. Um, it's getting, uh, it's chilly here in California, which is, I guess it's the, uh, uh, um, I don't know, environment. Yeah. Uh, it's a, g- Generally, it, w- it used to be warmer <laughs> right now, yeah. but, it, but it's not. Uh, so I guess uh, global warming. Yes. Or, or or no, that's the wrong word. It's environmental something. I don't know. <laughs> climate, Shift. climate change. Yes. Climate, climate change. change. There yes. You go. Right. Yeah. Well, the vernacular but changes. Uh, other than years. that, other than that, everything is kind of copacetic. I'm writing a book now, so it's kind of relaxed. Everything oh. is so exciting. Yeah, you know, it's awesome. Excited to hear about that, and so excited to have you back on. Now could not be a better time. Larry's hot right now. Larry, yeah, Larry's hot. Uh, so yeah, hot. I, actually, that's really strange. Uh, that I am more popular now. Not that I was ever really popular, but I'm more popular now than I've ever been, and I I haven't done anything. You have. well, no, you're I mean, so, I mean, so I, I just uh, for the last five years, for the last. Five years, I've been um, sequestered, not because of COVID, but just in my house, just making my own projects and, you know, making little film shorts and uh, writing this book and doing other, you know, favors for other friends, artists and stuff. So I have been out there, you know, putting out product. And yet um, everything I've ever done before five years <laughs> is always on the internet or it's, always. you know, it's, yeah. you're never off. Once you get on television, you're never off. That's, right. That's uh, so it's, you know, repeats and repeats. So I get these residuals and stuff, yeah. uh, which is nice. And that, you know, it, it, it pays the rent, but, but I don't know the, the popularity. I'm not contributing to it. That that's, that's the mystery oh, you definitely that are. it's just, well, it, I'm definitely popular and more popular, but I'm not contributing to it. It's just the old reruns of things I've, I've done. I've got to get some new product out there. That's the only thing. I've just got to fi- finish up what I'm doing. Let's talk about some new product. Let's get into this reunion. Okay. I mean, Friends had over uh-huh. 800 different characters and guest stars outside of the core six, and only a mm-hmm. small handful were asked to participate in the reunion. Of that small handful, only one came on in character and that was you sir really yes yeah have you seen it yet yeah i just saw me i, I didn't want to i don't i'm not into friends at all i mean that's <laughs> you mean you're not a fanatic and haven't seen every i episode? i n- no i don't watch it i i never have watched it um i just did that as a job it was a job i'm an actor right. i needed work <laughs> and Got to I'm, eat. Uh, well, yeah, you got to eat. And and it just took off. The show took off. And uh, there are other, uh, the, the soup Nazi, I guess, is the most popular. But <laughs> maybe not yeah. anymore. I doubt it anymore. I doubt it uh, anymore. But, but Mr. Heckles is going through the roof. I don't get it. Man. Everybody I loves Mr. Heckles. People, yes. People yes. absolutely but I, adore you. Yes. Tell me you've I seen have this no, uh, on social media. Say say that again. Tell me you've what? seen this uproar on social media since the no. Oh my no. god! 
Okay, so a what? lot of fans were just so happy to see you and just love the character, like you're saying. Well, yeah, I mean, I get, I get, I get fan mail, or I get, uh, you know, I'm on Cameo, so I do these, you know, happy yes. birthdays. But, but a hundred. Oh, 99, you know, I, I, it's just you can ask any character that I've done or whatever. But 99.9% of the requests are for Mr. Heckles. Wow. It's just weird, man. That character uh, yeah. just resonated with people. Well, I guess, but I did it 24 years ago. Yeah, but it's still <laughs> changing lives, Larry. I guess, sure. I mean, no, I, I understand that. It's just I have nothing to do with it. Well, I'll tell, you, <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. Not all of the comedy in Friends aged very well. Some of it does not play oh, okay. well today like it did then. And the Mr. Oh, the Mr. Okay. Heckles character is still hilarious. Agreed. And still, <laughs> still so funny. And, you and no one could have played that character like you. So well said. Wow. Well, that's great. That is, that's great. I love it. It's terrific. But uh, you know, and thank you, and thank you for all of the fans. But like I say, it's just uh, in, in some weird area. It's a, it's a mystery because I always have thought that you had to earn it to get it, and and I haven't done anything in five years. And like I say, I, I've done that. I did it twenty four years ago. I personally myself don't believe I even look like Mr. Heckles much anymore, but that doesn't seem to have any, you know, sway with the fans. They just, yes. yeah. Well, because one, it's not true. And that's part of the social media uproar. I'm going to tell you about, but first let me, let me correct you. You have paid your dues. There's such a thing as called oh, paid okay. your dues. So you, yeah, you are always going to be relevant it. and you have, yeah, you have done it. Oh, okay, already. cool. You're always going to be legendary. Thank you, Blake. Yes. Um, and yeah, as, far, as far as what we're seeing on social media, one, everyone says you look the exact same. Like they couldn't believe <laughs> how good you looked and that you still look the Holy same that you did cow. in the 90s. So that was half Holy of what I heard. Cow. And the other half was that fans, I mean, were irate that on the spot, a lot of the cast members couldn't remember your character's name. They also yeah, they didn't remember. I, oh that, I, that I got. Oh. They, 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 they showed me it. Good that, No, I thought that was kind of cool, actually, because well, that was very human. They yeah, that's all human. shouted Larry. They all knew exactly who, yeah, you, who were. you were. Um, but oh, yeah, they said Larry Hank. They, they all I heard that. Larry, but yes, after 25 but years and all the Mr. projects Hank. they've done, they couldn't remember the mystery. Well, the, but I thought that was cool. Yes, I, I didn't, cool. I, uh, you know, I thought, well, yeah, they're human. They're people, man. And you know, it showed it was one of the only parts of the reunion that wasn't rehearsed either. Like it was oh, an, well, an I didn't even surprise. see it. I got to say, you, they were know, most excited to see you, though, of all guests. They were all oh, jumping right. they, up they, and oh, down Mr. Heckles. for Mr. Heckles. <laughs> Once they uh, realized Mr. Heckles, they were dying. They, they, uh, somebody sent me a, a photo, a still photo uh, off of the video uh, of the reunion. And it's, uh, it's a photo, it's a close-up past Mr. Heckles. Mr. Heckles is in the foreground. But they were taking a picture of the people looking at uh, the cast looking at me and laughing and smiling that is funny and i had this really that. bad and i had this funny mr heckles you know scowl expression on my face perfect that is the artwork yeah, yeah. that we have chosen for this episode it really is we <laughs> have that picture in our yeah, you know the picture i'm talking about it's, yeah, it's, it's the artwork we're using for this episode absolutely we do yes it was, oh, it was, wow, the, best, it was the best shot because it's you in the foreground yeah. with the mr heckles scowl on your face and then right. the six of them on the couch and they are just their, their faces are they just, it's, their it's, smiles. lit up they they're all, yes. all lit up smiling yeah. <laughs> yes. so that's really cool but here's Here's the inside story on the actual picture of, of what's outside yes. of the frame. Yes. Yeah. What I, the reason that I'm scowling was I, you know, I wanted to have that M Mr. Heckles look sure. because that's part of the character, but that scowl was more than I even more than I even bargained for because I was really pissed at the whole show <laughs> at, 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 at how it was being run and, and, and because it wasn't anything like the the producers of that show are not the producers of Friends. That's right. The Friends Friends sold that for about five million dollars ten so, years ago or yep. something like that. So I knew that these weren't the real people, and they were not very nice. These people. Really? Uh, uh, no, no, not no, no, because they didn't have any interaction with them. So I didn't know if they were they were not nice, but they just it seemed very 
cold and and they just wanted to get on with the show it, yeah. it seemed like just business uh, it, was, it was yeah it was very business like uh not like show business like like mercantile business yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, uh, can we have a little fun here yeah 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 and they wouldn't allow it so my that scowl was my, my, a little of my anger at what was going uh, on how the show was being run even though i was just you know a very small part of it and the audience, while I was looking off camera and while they were smiling at me, that that photo, where I was looking was at the audience. They had a small audience, you know, they were all had their masks on, but there was enough, you know, for them to make some noise and, yeah. and clap yeah. and stuff. So I was looking at them and I was scowling at the audience and my hand, you don't see what my hand was doing, but my hand is going up and down like shush quiet <laughs> shut up and let me talk and get out of here that's what i was doing and that's what that scowl was about shut up let me say my line and get out of here <laughs> but it was perfect for it mr really heckles was. it was perfect it was, because it was real it came, it came from a real place you were you were actually yeah, annoyed yeah. that's yeah, it exactly. even better knowing the backstory <laughs> yeah and yeah mr heckles was always annoyed that, that was, was, that was the, his character. The key to him. Yes. So, yeah. And luckily, it just read perfectly for for what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to go home. No. And I, we, you know, we did totally notice that it was uh, different producers, not NBC, but HBO. Oh, okay. And, Good for you. And last time uh, we had you on and talked friends, we learned the difference between appearing in five or less episodes versus six or more episodes. Right. In our right. So I always have that as a grudge. This was. Does does this count as Larry Six? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, yeah, right. <laughs> is he going to get his boat or yeah, what? Yes, count? yes. Larry, right. I'm going to. Larry's on a lot of call back pay. Them on that. Hey, you I should. just did six shows. That's right. I, I need a bump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So if, if they ever do the show again, I start at a higher salary. <laughs> <laughs> it's my seventh show, man. <laughs> I never understood why they never did a spinoff of Mr. Heckles. It would have been a hit. That would have been, yeah, been great. Huge, well, the problem was they and killed still, off the character. And like that would have. Oh, well, they killed it off. But no. Uh, well, yes, they did. But I, I fixed it. Because, you know, I have to, uh, not that I have to, but I get these, uh, I, I'm on, like I say, I'm on Cameo, and I do, you know, birthday greetings and we weddings, you know, happy birthday to Johnny and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. and, and they're mostly for for the fans. So uh, the, the fans know that Mr. Heckles had a heart attack and died. So I, in my mind, as an actor, taking on the role of Mr. Heckles to wish somebody a happy birthday. Yeah. I had to make that adjustment. I mean, as, oh. uh, as an, as an actor, I don't think anybody else would have bothered, but it does bother me that the character is dead <laughs> and I have to wish you a happy birthday. So what do you do? So, well, here's what I did. I said, you know, uh, uh, hi Blake. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Heckles, you know, uh, I had a heart attack. They got me to the hospital and they revived me and I moved to a, your area. So I live near you. Oh. And so you got to keep it down. They revived Blake, you oh, got to keep, keep it down. It. I got birds. I got cats, you know, and don't disturb them. Oh, my God. So that's that's how I, I, I adjusted my character. Oh, it's great. I, 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 they, they revived me. I love that you did that. <laughs> As a day maker. Well, I had yeah. to. I mean, it's not that I wanted to, but I'm an actor, you know, I yes. mean, kind of a semi hemi demi actor. So yes, in my mind to do it, I had to justify it. I, I just couldn't do it because I feel guilty. I, I did feel guilty in the beginning. I just wished you a happy birthday. I didn't make any adjustment. And then I felt awful. I thought, yeah, but he's dead. Well, how did that? How did that happen? I have to I have to justify it. So You're then the next artist, call, I did. Yes. A true, a true well, artist. yeah, I, I think I just have OCD. Is that, that's what <laughs> well, we can relate with that. So you, okay, that's why we appreciate cool. it so much, I think. <laughs> well, you have had a lot more than this guest appearance going on. I well, know, yeah, yeah. You yeah. have been writing a lot in a couple different projects yes. in development. What are you able to share about these? Any details you can give? Uh, let me see. Uh, well, I have uh, the first thing I... I have a, a website now. I, I don't know if I talked about this before, the real but Larry I have a Hankin? website, The Real Larry Hankin. So that, okay, so that's not new, uh, uh, but that's a website and I got my art on it, and my um, film shorts and stuff on there and 
my my paintings and my yes. well, t-shirts uh, and stuff. Well, the web the website uh, isn't new, but there's new content on there in new paintings. Yeah, there's some. I don't I, actually. I don't check it too much because I got too much to do that I'm trying to catch up with. Uh, so if I go on there, then I have to answer emails and 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 then you know spend. Look, the the internet is a black hole of Calcutta. It just <laughs> you, sucks you in. <laughs> It just sucks you in, and I don't want to do that. And, and so I avoid it at all costs. I really do. I, I don't like to get on it because I'm there for like three hours or two days. It's a rabbit hole. It's, two days. it's a rabbit hole, and there's no rabbit in it. There's nothing in it. Uh, it's just instructions, and I'm dyslexic, so that really affects me because uh, it's very hard for me to follow uh, wrote instructions with nobody there to say, well, what we mean is, you know, or to explain it to me. So it's, it's a horror trip because of dyslexia. Um, and that's why I try to avoid it. So, so there's the, the, the website, but then uh, I'm starting, um, uh, I'm getting a, a Patreon, uh, channel, I, I oh, guess they nice. call it. Yeah. So I'm going on Patreon. Uh, they're, they're working on it now. It'll, it'll go up in, I don't know, uh, a couple of days or maybe next to two weeks or something like that. Uh, but there'll, there'll be, there'll be an announcement on my Facebook page. So there's that. Okay. So Patreon, and then I'm writing this, uh, book and I'm also doing, um, zoom, zoom, uh, stories, uh, which will probably uh, definitely go on the Patreon thing. What I'm doing is, zoom stories. Uh, well, well, See, I'm writing this. Well, I guess the book came out of what I'm doing. I, I, I was doing a lot of podcasts uh, on Zoom. So I saw that, you know, there's the, the, the interviewer and then there's uh, me. And then when I would talk, uh, you know, I would ramble on. They would just put a picture of me up. They would just put a video of me. You know, there's a switcher that they have on Zoom. So you could just put one picture up. So as I'm, I'm watching it, you know, I would do the podcast and then I would watch it. And I would see that whoever was doing the Zoom podcast, whenever I would talk, they would switch to just me talking, uh, you know, telling some story about, you know, friends or Breaking Bad or whatever. Yeah. OK. And then uh, so I got the idea that why don't I just use Zoom as a single broadcast medium for me to tell these stories oh. with just my face? Just like I'm doing a broad, just like I'm doing a Zoom broadcast. Yeah. In other words, it's just me talking, and then they 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 switch to the interviewer asking me a question, then they switch to me full face, you know. Just so I thought, well, why can't I do that just on my own? Just you know, have I get somebody to ask me a question, and then I'll talk for ten minutes about, uh, you know, uh, Escape from Alcatraz, yeah. which I, which I started to do, and I said. Let's do this every Saturday just for one hour. Let's do, let's do a Zoom podcast of me telling my stories. You just ask me questions, but every time I talk, you just put me on. Okay. And he said, yeah. So we did that for eight Saturdays. So eight hours. So we had eight hours of me telling my show business stories, my, my, my movie stories, my TV stories. And I, I watched them all and I said, wow, this, 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 could work, but wow, this could be a book. So that turned me on to writing the book. And meanwhile, a guy called me and said, Hey, you know, I see these podcasts of you doing Zoom stuff. That would be great for Patreon. Why don't you just do it for Patreon? And I said, yeah. Well, I have, I just happen to have eight hours of me talking like what you want for Patreon. Wow. So so he watched them. He watched about three and he said, yeah, this is perfect. OK, I'll edit them together and we'll, you'll do a half hour a week on Patreon. And it's just you, you know, telling about all, all these uh, shows that you did. And uh, so that's that's what's going to be on Patreon. So that's all in the and that's all been banked now. That's uh, awesome. So now, uh, it, it is because I watch them and they're really good. I mean, I, I don't really like what I do because I just. That's how I am. I just don't like it. I want. I can do it better next time. But I, I watched them. <laughs> I know. And that's yeah, that's how I got through uh, stand-up comedy. I was not. I was not good in the beginning. I. I, I was kind of. Um, well, I, I. 
I went to art school, so I was kind of like Vincent Van Gogh. You know, he was awful in the beginning, but turned out to be a genius. I mean, the guys. So I, I always yeah. looked up to him. He's my, it's like Picasso and Bob Dylan and, and Vincent Van Gogh. Those are my heroes. You know, I look up to them. Good so, so, uh, <laughs> so I, I thought, okay, you know, this will work. And then that's m- made me start writing the book. I was so jazzed about how the Zoom podcasts were going uh, for for patreon yeah. so i'm in the middle of writing the the book and that i love writing it's just great because uh basically what i've done this is another thing i mean see i i don't like the internet but digital is amazing so i'm torn because there is an app now and i don't know if you guys know this but there's an app uh, I don't know the name of it because I I'm not good with working digital, but so I gave it to somebody else. But there's an app that you can feed in your it's a voice thing, so you can feed in the voice recording. So even if you have a a, a Zoom thing, which is video and audio, you can just feed in the audio to this app from a Zoom podcast, and it will type out exactly there's no mistakes it will type out what you just said or what it hears and i've read it people have done it for me or with this one guy does it for me and he takes my zoom podcast and he puts it into this app and it types it out perfectly there's no mistakes and then you can type into the app cut out all the uhs ums whoa long spaces or the word fuck or the word <laughs> the it doesn't matter wow, you can type in awesome. a word that cool. you want taken out or a sound that you want taken out like too much space yeah, you know like five words, seconds like of said, space um that's really cool i definitely knew about the transcription services but not that you can customize it like that to take out the ums oh and filler words totally and, and i and that's how i'm writing the book so i know it works oh, what he does cool. he 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 takes the eight hours and he feeds it into, well, no, I did another eight hours separately, just audio for, for this guy to do that because somebody else was working on a video for, for Patreon. So I did another eight hours for a guy just, just uh, on the phone, like I'm doing for you guys right now, uh, for eight hours every, every Saturday when I finished the, the, the Zoom thing, I did eight hours on just phone, on the phone. Wow. Same thing. I told the same stories, you know, and he fed it in. And what he does is he sends three, he sends me three recordings a week. And what he does is he takes out all the spaces and all the ums and the uhs, you know, like, uh, um, I, uh, all that. He takes it out and he sends it to me. So it's already typed out. And all I do for the book is I just make corrections. Like, I don't know if you know this, I discovered it, but (laughs) talking and, and listening to me video or listening to me right now on the phone is different than if you recorded exactly this and you put it in a book, it wouldn't be the same. Of course you would have to adjust it. Reading Definitely. is different than listening. Well, I didn't know that, but, but that's, so what, that's what I do. He sends me the typed out recordings with all the us and ums taken out. So it's just a, and there's not, there hasn't been a mistake yet. I've done now 30 pages now, 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 forty pages, and and there hasn't been one mistake in the transcription nice. at all. Yeah, that's amazing. You it know, is amazing. Gen, uh, and and they, even separation of words. It's all each word is separate in, in itself. You know, it's it's amazing. So so th- that's what I'm doing. I'm writing the book now, so I get three a week, and I do three a week, and then I, and then we're banking them, and then what we're going to do is take them the printed stuff, the stuff that I've typed out as corrected and, but I'm not, I'm not typing it out. I'm just correcting it and making it readable. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll just put it together in some sort of order and that'll be a book. And that, that, that's the next thing. That's so and cool. then, uh, we'll do some, uh, and then I'll think of something else to do. <laughs> that's all. I, I like that. the idea of using your videos and your stories from podcasting and all that and turning it into your memoir. Essentially. Yeah. That's great. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah, and it's, and it's working and it just blew, blows my mind because it never occurred to me until I started watching my podcasts and thinking, Oh, wait a minute. I, I can, I can just do it. You know why? I, I, I know why it occurred to me in particular, because I started out as a stand up comedian. In other words, it's a stand-up comedian 
uh, on on Zoom. That, yeah. That's what you're getting. Only it's from the from the chest up. It's you don't. You know, I'm not walking around on a stage with an audience, which is easy. It's just a close up. Yes. And and I thought, you know, my friends who I, I started to talking about it, I started talking about it before I did it. I said, hey, I got this idea about doing a Zoom thing with my, you know, comedy. It'll be like stand up, but it'll only be chest up to my head. And they said, no, yeah, but nobody will watch that. You know, you, you got to have cuts and you have to have action and walking around. And I said, yeah, but they do Zoom podcasts. And the only thing that they're cutting away to is the interviewer asking me another question. And then they cut back to me full face. And, you know, I'll talk for like eight minutes and nobody tunes out. You know, all the podcasters are saying, hey, man, they really, you know, my fans, their fans who listen to their podcast, they they call me and they say, hey, it went over great. We're getting great feedback. And, you know, so we'll have you back again. You know, just like you guys. But but um, I didn't know that until they informed me that it was working, you know. And then so I said, well, if it's working for them, it should work for me. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah. So so it is. So that's that's the new stuff that's coming down the line. Unfortunately, it just takes a while to process it, you know, and and, and make it uh, happen. But that's what's coming down in about, you know, within a month, it'll it'll be out. The, the both the the zoom podcast on patreon um and well the book will take a, lo- a lot longer uh that, that'll be about l- at least six months to a year before it's actually in bookstores wow but i'll i'll, I'll finish it in a couple of months yeah so uh, but I, I i love doing it. it it's really cool and i can work at my own speed and it's my own uh material yes. so i don't have to memorize other people's words yeah. you know uh dyslexia it doesn't allow me to be a fast uh, memor- memorizer. Uh, it takes me a while. Yeah, uh, I'm the same way. Uh, oh, really? Well, yeah. you know, welcome to the club or <laughs> welcome to me to your club. Yeah, there's a lot of people uh, in show business who are yeah. dyslexic. I didn't it's a uh, lot know more that. common than people think. Oh, boy, is it ever. The, the unfortunate thing, well, for me back in the past, uh, it was unfortunate, was when I was born... Uh, dyslexia wasn't invented yet i mean they didn't have a term for it they didn't know what it was you were just a a weird quirky kid uh and it it caused a lot of fights and and a lot of trouble when i was uh, growing up uh, being dyslexic because nobody knew what it was i was just weird and different you know so it it, it wasn't cool yeah well uh, yeah i didn't know what i had i mean i knew there was something with the brain i knew i knew because I, I was getting the information. I just couldn't arrange it in the right order. That that was, right. I got that far, but I didn't know it was dyslexia. And then there's workarounds. I mean, once you know you have dyslexia, you can deal with it. But if you don't know, it's, you know, it's a mystery and it just drives you nuts, man. And oh boy, the, the fights I would get into would be crazy. <laughs> I can imagine. I mean, uh, yeah, because you don't know exactly what it is that, you know, I, uh, mainly the fights would start because I would say something that would be taken the wrong way because I heard what the person said in the wrong way. So I would be giving an, an answer or a, a jive or, a, 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 you know, a, a snappy comeback. But it was the wrong comeback. <laughs> you know? It's like I took and whatever so, you said as insulting and I don't like it. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I would just say it the wrong way. Or yeah. yeah, but stuff would, would come out. Or in the, in the other way, uh, if you were teaching me something, um, it would take me a long time. And, and I would seem to you to be stupid. So then they, you would start talking slower and louder to me. Which was just an insult. I mean, I've had yeah. a lot of teachers, uh, a lot of teachers talk slow and loud, even directors talk slow and loud to me. Or when I would do like, okay, uh, here's a perfect example of it. Uh, have you ever seen the, the movie um, Armed and Dangerous with... Uh, um, oh, who is in Armed and Dangerous? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah the, it's been a oh, long time. Oh, that great time. guy. So from... Uh, uh, Second City, uh, the fat guy. Dan Aykroyd. Uh, no, the other guy, uh, the fatter guy. John Candy. John Candy, yeah. that's it. That's there was it. a John Candy and another uh, Second City guy in it, but uh, Armed and Dangerous. Okay, so I got a job in it as Kokolovich. It, it plays on it. It plays on somewhere in the world every day. Uh, but it's, uh, so I played a, uh, and what it is, Armed and Dangerous, it was a hired 
guards, you know, not policemen, but you were hired, you were given a gun and a uniform and you would uh, stand by a parking gate or something like that, you know. <laughs> so it was a movie about hired people, normal people who are given guns and a uniform. And that was the joke that you don't always do that. Right. that some people are not cool to give a gun <laughs> and a uniform too. So that was the, that was the joke and the premise. And Kokolovich was the worst case of the part that I played because the character, now the character, was uh, not well schooled. He wasn't a critical thinker, and he was always on LSD <laughs> or, or some sort of drug. And that was written. That was written in in the script. And it, but so it, it was showing that here's the worst case of a person given a gun with a very little training, a gun and a uniform, and see and put him out, you know, guarding a parking garage and see what happens. Oh. So th that was the humor of it, and it was cool. But I always like to kind of stay a little in character, even off, off stage. I mean, just because of the dyslexia, because if I'm talking to you right now and a, an AD comes over to me and says, Hey, Larry, you're up, you're on camera right now. We need you. Uh, generally what, what I would do and any actor would do is say, okay, Blake, I'm sorry. I got to go and excuse myself and go on the camera and then do my part and then come back. But with dyslexia, I can't disconnect that fast. I can say goodbye, Blake, but I can't get into character for another like two or three minutes. It's just it's just a weird warming up thing. Process. My brain or whatever. But I can't walk from talking to you onto a set. I just can't. I've seen other actors do it. It's just very normal. I mean, it's not, no, no big deal about it. Everybody I just has can't their do own it. process. Yeah, yeah. But I know it's part of the dyslexia. So whenever the on, on the set, I would take a little time, three or four minutes before going <clears throat> over to the set. I would generally be the last one to walk on the set. And meanwhile, sometimes that director, James, James something, uh, would come over to me and he talked to me and I wouldn't understand them at first. Uh, or I'd be slow to you know, go, yeah, well, we just say that again. Or what did you, what did you want me to do? I, and he'd have to tell me twice. So he, he assumed that I was stupid and that I was on acid. That, that was his two assumptions. And he told me this a couple of months after the movie was made. Really? He admitted no. this to me. Yeah. So, but I didn't understand it. And I was getting kind of angry that it, why are you talking to me? I, I didn't, I didn't vocalize it, but that was a perfect example of dyslexia interrupting my normal life would be he kept on talking loudly or or when I would do something funny where people would laugh, you know, uh, and they, they would have to do the shot again because people laughed in the middle of my take, uh, you know, and they destroyed the sound. Yeah. But he would say, stop doing that. And I would go, why? And he would say, because it's not funny. And I would say, but of course it's funny. People just laugh. That's why we're doing it again. <laughs> and he'd say, I don't care. It's not funny. Don't do it. And John Candy, who was in the scene with me, would come to my defense. He said, no, it is funny. And, he, wow. and the director, yeah, and the director would say, well, he's not doing it again. It's not funny. It's not going in the movie. And one time, just to give you an example of how far this stuff went, uh, this, this time where John Candy said, no, it is funny. And the director said, no, it isn't. Cut that out, Larry. And so, you know, I didn't want to make any trouble. So I said, yeah. OK, OK. Uh, and then John looked at me like, you know, hey, he's the director. I, I can't argue with him. Uh, so, OK, fine. I, I'll just cut it out. So they did one more rehearsal. So I cut it out. And the cinematographer, who was a big deal, he was a very famous cinematographer. I don't remember what it is. Name like Rogers or something like that. But he said. He said, wait a minute, wait a minute. After the rehearsal, he said, what happened to the, Larry looking into the flashlight? And the director said, I cut that out. And he said, why? And he said, because it's not funny. And he said, yes, it is funny. So now the cinematographer is going wow, on my yes. side. Yeah. And th that's an impossible thing. I've never seen that done before. And then he said, so they said, no, we're just doing it. The director said, no, let's just do it and get out of here. It's not an important scene. Let's continue. And the cinematographer says, okay, I want to do it. I want, if you wow. do me a favor, 
And I'm standing there right next to him. And he says, I want you to do me a favor. I want to shoot this again with him looking into the flashlight. Would you just let me do it? It does take two seconds. It's a very short scene. L- let me just do this, please. And the director uh, said, okay, because this cinematographer was way more famous than this director. So he said, well, okay. So then the cinematographer goes, okay, could I have my crew? Can my crew please gather around the set and any of my crew who doesn't have anything to do with the filming of this set, uh, this, this, this scene, please stand around and watch this scene. And about, you know, 10 or 15 guys, this is like a big movie, about 10 or 15 guys, his crew, just gathered around the, the, the set where we were filming. And they didn't know what the hell was going on. They're just asking, oh, well, what's going on? He says, okay, just, I just want you to watch this scene. That's all. Okay. And he says to me, he said, Larry, just look in the, in the, in the flashlight again uh, when you do this. I said, okay. And he goes, okay. And the cinematographer now is running the whole thing. And he goes, okay, roll them, action. We do the scene. And, and basically what it is, as Kokolovich, it was the scene where the participants in the school for these guards were being, for the first time, given their guns and their flashlights. And uh, congratulations to the prop department. All flashlights had batteries in them. Nice. Although, that, yeah, I mean, for no reason. I mean, there wasn't, uh, you know, we, we didn't turn them on or anything. It was just, we were handing just a flashlight and a gun. I said, my God, is there bullets in this gun too? I mean, Jesus Christ. How prepared are we? <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah how, how complete is this guy? Okay. So I checked the chamber. No, it is not. So I said, but okay, but then why? So I, I turned on the flashlight, you know, as I was rehearsing, you know, I turned on, oh, wow, there's batteries in there. Okay, cool. So the guy said, so what I had done that was cut, that the director said was not funny, but everybody laughed at. So when I got my flashlight, we were all in a line, you know, next flashlight gun, next flashlight gun. That was the scene. And then John Candy was behind me. That's why he's so close to say, hey, that's funny. Uh, so when I came up, all I did was I got the gun, took the flashlight, turned it on and stared right into it as I walked off <laughs> and everybody laughed. So that was what was cut. So uh, so the director said um, to me uh, when he when he cut, he said, what are you doing? And I said, uh, I'm, I'm looking in my flashlight. Why? Why are you doing that? Because I'm on acid. Now, I'm speaking from the character's point of view. Right. I was in the scene. What are you doing? I'm looking in the flashlight. Why? I'm on acid. Yeah. Like... But he took it as Larry Hankin is on is it... acid oh, and admitting I'm it. doing your character. Bald face. <laughs> no. I mean, oh, oh, really? Well, you could be a great director. <laughs> <I mean, laughs> you get it. So that's why he cut it. Because I said I was on acid oh. and he took it as the truth. But was that scene okay, improvised? So, no, no. It was you, All you had to do was, the scene was, grab your gun, grab your flashlight, walk off camera. So grab your gun, grab your flashlight. Was, that was in the script. Walk down the line. It was just the, the people are getting their guns. It was a, it was a kind of a, a school a you know, montage. Yeah. Uh, a, a school montage. Yeah. You know, oh, they're doing this. They're sitting in the yeah. class. They're getting the guns. They're getting the flashlight. Blah, blah, blah. It was just a lot of cuts. So when I got my flashlight, just as I walked off while I was still on camera, I turned it on, looked in the flashlight and got off. You know, got my gun, got my flashlight, turned it on, looked into the camera and walked off. So it was just another guy. And then John Candy was right behind me. And the guy just cut. Larry, what are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm on acid. Okay, don't do that. So now the cinematographer has me doing it. He runs the scene. He says, okay, action, Larry. I look in my camera. I look in my flashlight, walk off. Run, he, the scene continues on for about maybe John Candy and one more guy. The cinematographer yells, cut. And he says, there, you see. And then when he, the minute he said cut, his crew broke down laughing. You know, they held their laugh in until he yelled cut. And then they laughed about what I just did. And he turns to the director, the cinematographer, he said, there, you see, it's funny. And he walked, he walked away from the director and the director just said, okay, Larry, keep it in. God damn it. All right. Let's do this thing again. 
So it's in the movie. The scene is in the movie, but that's what happened all before that scene was well, finally I taken by the it. cinematographer. Sometimes a so comedy, it's really crazy. It's hard. Like it's hard to know a comedy. Like sometimes those are some of the best parts. Are the parts that just happen where it's like this is yeah, what my character captured, would do right now. Yeah, I mean it's just capturing lightning in a bottle. It's happened many times to many actors. It's happened to me many times. But that director didn't get it, you know. But the reason that I that all that problem started was I think a little bit because of my dyslexia. First of all, it the dyslexia in the art department, the upside was, oh, it occurred to me right at, on camera. I, I didn't think of that beforehand. It was just, you know, when the guy handed me the, the flashlight, I just, because I guess I was in character, I just yeah. raised, I turned it on, raised it and looked into it and walked off. I mean, it was just a natural thing. Well, that is not uh, the only second, time that you have done that. You are known for some epic oh, yeah. improvisational yeah, yeah. moments. And last time we had you on, you played the hits for an hour and fielded every question about every role. You were so good to us. I did forget to bring up Home Alone somehow, and that ate at my core. Rose, hyper on too. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> we awarded you once the best bong rip ever performed on screen, and that still holds, by the way. This oh, <laughs> by the way, I, I, I've never seen that, but people have told me that. Oh, yeah. How, did you see? You, you've seen it? Oh, we've, seen we that talked movie? about it last time you were on yes right we, right but i, I, sent, I never... sent you the link for the trailer because i couldn't find the movie itself but in the trailer they showed oh i you... think i did right that's right, right. i did uh, yeah so, i sent you the link for the trailer hit. yes <laughs> this huge but yeah they knew it on the set right away they said wow that's a great <laughs> so last time you were on we awarded you best bong rip ever performed on screen still holds up this time i feel oh. like we need to award you best scene ever with a donut that was seriously. Oh, right. Oh, and wow. oh, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Now you got three. Now you got me going. Okay. And, that, and now it's a flashlight scene. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Oh, wait a minute. I got one more. I got one more. I, I never thought of it this way, but that's crazy. Okay. In, in the same movie, Armed and Dangerous, uh, there was an outside shot, uh, what they call second unit. In other words, the director wasn't there. They sent yeah. a second unit camera squad there with a thing. They sent me. John Candy and the other Second City actor, just the three of us, one camera and a sound guy with a Nagra, out to a garbage dump. That's a, the the director didn't want to go to a garbage dump, but I don't know. I don't know why we went out. Why why we were assigned in the narrative to go to a garbage dump? It was either to guard the garbage dump, or to practice. I don't know why, but it was a scene in the garbage dump. We went to a real garbage dump, and the garbage was mounds high. I mean, like mountains high. I mean, the, the, the garbage dump that I, the garbage mound that I climbed, because uh, we were just improvising. Yeah, we were just improvising. And John Candy said, let's just look for stuff in the garbage. <laughs> that, you know, well, while we're here, let's just look for good stuff. So uh, he said, I'm going this way. He told the other guy to go this way. And he said, Larry, go that way. So he was directing it. So, okay. So I go off that way. And then he said, and then come back and we'll show what we found. So we went off just a couple of feet. Look, just picked up anything that was handy, you know, come back. And, and then we all bragged about, you know, well, you know, John Candy had found something. I don't, <laughs> oh, no, they came back with nothing. They said, we didn't find anything. What did you find, Kokolovich? And I had found a, a, a really a broken comb and one old shoe. <laughs> and I brought it back and I said, hey, look what I found. What? This comb in this old shoe, man. This is cool. Let me see. Have you guys seen the other shoe? And uh, so uh, John Candy said, no, but I think the other one is up there. So he's improvising. And that was a great choice. He said, and he pointed to the top of this mound of garbage. <laughs> that was, I think. Three, uh, a minimum of two stories high, but it was probably <laughs> three stories high. But it was just a mound. So he pointed up to the top of it. Now, Kokolovich is on acid, you know, as an actor. And, and John knew this. His character knew that my character was on acid. So he was trying to put me on. So he says, he says, well, Kokolovich, I saw the exact shoe partner to the one you have on top of that mound of garbage. And I go, that one? And I point to the one he's pointing at. He said, yeah, on the top. And I go, okay, great. And I started climbing up the the, the mound. 
then then they cut away to I think John and this other guy had written lines that they said. So they said their lines. Meanwhile, I had climbed up really to the top of this mound. So I'm about three stories up on this garbage mound. And I, I, I did think of something to do. So first of all, I did find uh, another shoe, but it wasn't a match. But I did find another shoe, luckily. So I, I <laughs> held it up. That? Yeah. So I held it up. So now I'm, you know, I said, okay, rolling action, Larry. So I held up the shoe, and it's got this long shot. It's in the movie. This long shot of me on this on this mound of garbage, <laughs> on this hill of garbage, saying, "I found it! I found the other shoe!" Whoa! And all of a sudden, I just fall and disappear into the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> wow! I fall backwards, and I, I just disappeared. This. <laughs> and then they just then the, the camera it was a cool cut because then they cut to the camera, which is what they did really when I did that. I saw that's them. hilarious. They just shrugged and walked away. <laughs> was this with <laughs> Eugene you, Levy? And Eugene Levy, right? Exactly. So it was, yeah, it was uh, uh, John and Eugene. <laughs> they just looked at each other and shrugged <laughs> and walked away. That's and it was awesome. really good, but that was totally improvised. I yeah, love yeah, to that hear that. Good. Yeah, those. But are but that really that goes in with the the lucky thing on on camera was yes. the 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 disappearing down the the uh, looking into the flashlight the yeah. and the uh, and the donut. I, I, there's probably others if I if I oh, you know, I'm now sure. I'm going to be up no, all night trying plenty. to think of uh, <laughs> you know, things captured on uh, the light, lightning in a bottle. Yeah. Well, the donut was. Remember, I mean, donut, remember that as yeah. a uh, as a, a category or as or for yeah. subject matter for your oh, oh, oh. your memoirs and everything. Absolutely Just right. Things. Uh, yeah. Actions. Uh, well, lightning caught in a bottle. Exactly. You know? <laughs> Love and, it. And memorable, Great. unscripted parts. Yes, that's that's a great category. Thank you. That's cool. Yeah. I'm going to try to remember that. Yeah. So in our studio right now, we are looking at the most epic, awesome, colorful, and eye-catching piece of art. Yeah. It is called what? Hood in the Hood, and it is a Larry Hankin original. We yeah. love it, Larry. And thank oh, you, you so guys. You guys are the ones it. who got it. Yes. 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 Oh, man. Cool. Oh, I, I was so happy. I went down to the place i signed it uh, it was a big production it yeah was sweet. that was great so cool. love it thank you thank you thank you oh great man oh that's so terrific it is man. So oh cool. man the pictures of it and everything they don't do it justice isn't it great in the colors it is all oh, the colors so and cool. all of it so vibrant it really yeah. is yeah I that's my favorite. That's my favorite. It's it's that our really favorite too, is. and we are in awe by your talent. It's a very meaningful piece. I'm just upset that I didn't ask for two because I want one for home as well. Well, you can get it in any size, I think. I don't know. I I, I have nothing to do with that. There's a couple size I, options I on there. Yeah, you just released a couple new ones. One's called David, clearly riot inspired. That's my next favorite, and these are just excellent. Pieces. Oh, da David. Yeah, so modern oh, man. and contemporary. That is no. You you want to know something? That's really good. Your thing and 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 that David is uh, by two uh, two friends of mine. Well, I consider you a friend. Uh, the, the people I know, and and uh, one is right near my house, and I saw it. Uh, but he got David, wow. and it, he got it. You know, uh, printed up just as big as yours, bigger even. So cool. I mean, it was amazing. And he got it framed, and he got it in his living room, and he invited me over just to see it. Yeah. Uh, but but you like that, and that that's one of my favorite too. I thought nobody will ever get that because it's just too in your face. But oh, no, I, no, I, I love what we're I looking loved for. It. I loved it. It's just I think I'm gonna get now that you reminded me. I'm gonna get that on a t-shirt. I, yeah, I, yeah I'm gonna, to I'm gonna get a t-shirt. That should be on a t-shirt. Yes, I, I love the graffiti uh, aspect of it. It's just really, really cool design. Oh yeah, and I, I loved working on the graffiti. And I oh, that was my favorite. Part. Everyone to check them out on the real LarryHankin.com. They are really awesome. Oh, cool. Thank the you. coolest part of our studio. And so you. Oh yeah. Oh, you got a studio. Yeah. 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 yeah, we yeah. Got it in the studio, and we'll wow, be we'll man. be on camera likely next season. And that painting. Oh will be wow! I got you. Got to get me on camera every episode. Of course, we'll oh, be on camera. Yeah. And you'll be able to okay, see the, cool. the painting that behind painting it. Painting will. Oh be right. On yes. camera at all times. And yes, we we got to get you back. And Fantastic. Get you on camera. So you write, Fantastic. you paint, you give epic one-liners on the most popular show ever. Created. Yeah, I got. <laughs> yeah, I got dyslexia, OCD, and ADHD. <laughs> 
So we that's love why you that for all of it. it makes you <laughs> me, who you me are. Too. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, finally, I, I just, you know, I found out who I was, you know, a couple of years ago. I mean, because I discovered it was started with the discovery of, oh, this is dyslexia. Oh, I mean, that was such a it's like all of a sudden learning to read. I swear to God, it's that that kind of mind opening Yeah. when, when you discover, oh, it's dyslexia. I'm not crazy. Wow. You know, <laughs> it's it just amazing. Just something yeah. you got to deal with. Everyone has their things. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, r- really. But, you know, each one. But. Each person thinks they're the only ones right. that has this, That's whatever true. it is. You know? You're so definitely true. not um, alone. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the yeah, but of humanity. Exactly right. Yeah, but you're different. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> we oh, love people oh, you must be a homo sapien. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so glad you're getting back into comedy. I love hearing that you're yeah, I, doing yeah. these videos uh, yeah. and taking advantage of the technology. And you're already doing the Zoom interviews and the podcast already. It was a brilliant idea just to kind of organize these. Um, uh, yeah. Put, put them in but a here's... Patreon format. Um, yeah, but here's the last the, the last uh, thing, like the bucket list. You know, this is the bucket list. Yeah. But um, um, no, when I get through with all that, uh, finishing the Patreon and getting the book out and about, then uh, no, then I want to go back to uh, doing stand up. Then I'm going to go back to Ooh, venues. Yes. Uh, yes. The pers- yes. In person. You would uh, absolutely a couple of- kill it. You, oh, I mean, just, my God. Just, you can oh, tell from man, the attention yeah. you get from Cameo and then, you know, everything oh, that you see online. Well, yeah. if, if you were touring so and came really around to the, to the comedy club circuits, you would oh. absolutely kill it. Crowd People show up would every love time, that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I never thought of it that way. There are comedy clubs. See, when I stopped doing comedy, uh, one of the reasons was uh, the comedy clubs were dying out and it was just television and arena shows. And I wasn't big enough. Oh, I didn't want to. By then I was an actor and yeah. I didn't have time. You and I was in the on. committee and stuff. But now it's coming back and there are venues. There oh, was. Yeah. But now and now with COVID, people are going back into theaters. Yeah. So that's opening up. Fine. So, yeah. So but that's 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 in the offing. That's what I really want to do I'm, I'm looking forward to that oh, it'll be next year that. sometime so exciting oh, let yeah. us know if this happens yeah. because we yes. need it okay so here. where in arizona are you phoenix Christ. phoenix scottsdale area oh phoenix i've been to phoenix yeah that's great I, I love it yeah that's a good part of the country you're in i yeah. mean it may be hot or something but oh it's hot as hell but it's, it's cool. definitely hot as hell oh wow well, well yeah but I can just come in for, you know, a, a weeknight. Yes, you know. c- come in for the show. We'll help promote you and we'll take care of you while you're in Phoenix. Oh, cool, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Well, that's great. Okay, cool. I got something to look forward to. Yes, okay. of course. Cool. As always, you are such a treat to talk to. and We cannot thank you enough for your time, Larry. Yeah. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Nice talking to you. You are amazing. Cannot wait for okay. these projects to finish up, and we will be eager to check them out and, again, help promote them. Okay, Blake. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank I, you. I've Larry. forgotten your thank names you. already. Oh, okay. Thank you Bye. so much. So good talking to you. Take care. Okay, talk take soon. care, too. Bye. Bye. Damn, he's just so great. Larry. Best. Love Larry. Proud to say that we know him. I he, know. He's so great. What a cool guy. I'm glad I remembered to bring up Home Alone. God, I didn't do that last <laughs> time. Oh my gosh. He really Ugh. does have so many of those like amazingly like unscripted special moments. I feel like we need to have Larry over for dinner one of these nights. <laughs> I agree. Has the child been involved in an incident with a drunken and or mentally ill <laughs> member of the immediate family? <laughs> what? No. Why well, too? Has he been involved in a household incident? <laughs> <laughs> Negative. You want us to go to your house to check on him? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Get it. <sighs> Good stuff. Larry. Well, season four is on fire. Oh, my God. And believe it or not, we have so much it's more so coming. Much it's so much more. It's unreal. not even over. It is unreal. So is 8080's dream car giveaway number 47 for a Lamborghini Huracan plus $60,000 cash. This is going on right now and they are offering double the entries, meaning every dollar you spend gets you not one, but two entries into the dream car giveaway action. You do not want to miss out, nor do you want to forget to check out somethingcrunchy.com where you'll find every episode, our links for social media, and the almighty crunch store where you'll find all kinds of crunchy gear showing that you are a proud citizen of Crunch Nation. Then there's the Something Crunchy Facebook group, growing by the day, and the patients have long taken over the asylum. But wow, (laughs) it's a fun group. We love how much you guys make us laugh throughout the week. 
And if you're not in, you're missing out. Yep. Seriously. This has been another episode of Something Crunchy. And as always, don't ever forget to live your crunchiest life. And be crunchy to one another. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, follow, and all that crunchy good shit. Thank you for listening. Uh, hi, Blake. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Heckles. Blake, you oh, got to keep, keep it down. It. I got birds. I got cats, you know, oh, and don't disturb them. Oh, my God.